You're listening to the smartest guys in marketing, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, conversions, and marketing coolness. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, T Money, from Traffic and Funnels, smartest guys in marketing. I'm going to continue the trend here, sharing with you some episodes that are not typical, traditional, smartest guys in marketing episodes, okay? But this, what I've got for you today, is very special. I'm actually pulling a piece of private training that is all about mindset, mindset performance. Before you stop this podcast, let me just tell you something real quick. We are where we are today, not because of how good we are at marketing, although part of it is marketing, but because of how we think and our ability to solve problems. As an entrepreneur, if you want to make money, that's great, but you're going to get punched in the mouth over and over and how you think about that mindset is a big, 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 big deal. So there is some marketing training in this specific episode, but there's a lot of mindset. And this is actually something that we sent to clients. If you're inside client kit or upper echelon, you see these weekly trainings we do on mindset. We have weekly trainings on mindset, weekly trainings on sales. In addition to the one-on-one elements that are involved in client kit, listen, best program on the planet bar none. And I'm going to give you a piece of it today because Chris is almost done with some new marketing stuff and I've been out and we've been building all of this new stuff. And so I'm actually going to take a recording of the mindset training. I'm going to share it with you here. I hope you love it and uh, leave some good reviews. We're going to be back the 1st of June, by the way, with brand new content. So we'll resume our normal scheduled programming. Until then, we're just going to give you some recordings of things. And actually, you might like this even more than the typical podcast is really in depth this is client material so enjoy this one let us know what you think about it and uh for real i mean that for real shoot us a message leave us a review we love hearing your feedback it's the best feeling in the world and uh we'll talk soon yo yo what's up everybody welcome 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 to the first ever ever mindset monday it's an amazing day here in nashville tennessee had an amazing weekend i was in Chicago all last week doing some stuff. Chris did some uh, some yard work. He worked his manor, Evans Manor. Many of you were there a couple weeks ago. It's a beautiful place. He's got four boys or three boys and a daughter. He's got to put them to work. And uh, I hope you're doing well. Summer is approaching. We are last day of April today. Hope everybody's making some sales and getting them busy in their business. So I'm glad you're here. We're going to start doing these every Monday. Mindset is so, so important. In fact, I wrote down earlier that mindset is like the body. You can't take care of your body for uh, a week and then expect you to have uh, rock solid abs the rest of your life. You got to take care of it every single day. And mindset's the same way. It's amazing how many people come into this program. They don't think they need mindset. They don't think they need help with the way they think. And then, then they crash and burn because they learned mindset four years ago, but they weren't prepared. They weren't taking the vitamins. They weren't hitting the gym. They weren't eating their vegetables. And all of a sudden they got fat and lazy. It's the same with mindset. So this is going to be really cool. I think it's a really cool addition to client kit. And um, if you don't know, uh, if you're brand new, welcome, first of all. But if you don't know, today is the first of the official new client kit. So we're going to be rolling that out today and getting you guys some info uh, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. It's going to be really good. Really, really good. All right. It's going to be a little bit more laid back than what you're used to as well. I'm just going to wrap for 30 minutes or so about mindset. The title for today is there's a lock on your potential and the only key that fits is not going to tell you yet. I'm going to tell you in a second. Okay, I'll tell you now. There's a lock on your potential. And the only key that fits is belief. There's a lock on your potential. And the only key that fits is belief. Now, I'm not talking about belief in general. Obviously, we all believe that the sun rises and falls. We believe that 
if we get in our car and turn the key, then it's most likely going to turn on. We all have belief, but I'm talking specifically about a, a particular type of belief, the belief that we deserve what we want, belief that we deserve what we want. So I want to tell you a story about my roots and how I got started and the process that I went through and uh, the things that I went up against and, and the things that I learned at the bottom of the mountain that enabled me to get to the top of the mountain. It doesn't matter where you are right now. You could be doing 100K a month. You could be doing 10K a month. Shoot, you could literally be trying to get your first client. The key is the same, and it's the belief that what you want, you deserve it, and it's possible. Now, I can hear some of you sort of shaking your heads and being like, well, what about your offer? That's what I signed up for. What about my funnel? I need a funnel to hit my full potential. I need a webinar. I need to know how to sell. Tactically, we cover all those things too. We're going to talk about offers and sales tomorrow. And then we have sales clinics and stuff. Listen, everything starts with the mind. Everything. Everything starts with the mind. Your potential starts with the mind. It doesn't start with your hands. It doesn't start with your feet. It doesn't start with your software. It starts with the mind. How you think about the things in your life and around you and the things that you want, that's where it starts. If you want to fly high, if you actually want to achieve everything that you say you want to achieve, you need to start with the mind. You need to make sure you are rock solid in the way you perceive the setbacks that you face. So 2014, early 2014, I started learning marketing. We were living in Memphis, Tennessee. My wife was a hairstylist. She's the best in the world. Literally, y'all, she has people that fly in from places in Missouri. They drive up from Alabama. She's got someone from Austin that flies in to get her their hair cut and colored and all that stuff for my wife. And I didn't even know this existed before we got married. I was like, what are you talking about? People fly in to get their hair colored. That sounds so stupid. I'm used to going to like Walmart. But she's a big deal. And she travels and she teaches and stuff. Uh, but I relocated us from Missouri to Memphis. That's why people were flying in. And she had to start over on her business. And her as good as she was, she was not really figuring out how to build her business in Memphis. And so I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to start learning marketing and I'm going to help my wife build her business. I've always wanted to learn marketing. I've always wanted to do that, but I've never had anyone to experiment on. I've never had a business. So I picked up a book by John Carlton. If you guys know him, any copywriters in the house say hello. John Carlton is the man. I got the opportunity to meet him about a year after I started learning copy, which is amazing. And uh, I just started experimenting. I started sending out, believe it or not, direct mail letters to people in zip codes in, in Memphis that were wealthy. Uh, I got online, got on the phone, and I started buying addresses of people who were in reasonably wealthy zip codes. And we would send them a letter. And remember, this is literally my first go at marketing. I'm just like pretending that I know what the hell I'm doing <laughs> and trying stuff. And we would send them a letter and we'd say, hey, bas you know, basically, I still have the letter today. and It's awful. But basically, we'd say, hey, my name is Lindsay and I just moved here and I'm an award-winning salon owner. And I would love to cut your hair for free because I want to get to know the neighborhood. I want to get to know the people, blah, 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 blah. And this person would bring the letter in. They would get their hair cut. And my wife would do it for free. And then I built a follow-up system for her where she would send them a Starbucks card in the mail. She would send them a handwritten, uh, handwritten letter. And um, her business started blowing up. This was working. I remember the first client or the first call she got from one of these letters. It was like, oh my God, we are never, literally never going to have to worry about my wife you know, getting clients again. Of course, that was naive because eventually you do kind of run out of geographic market and some of the clients were horrible and they would make appointments and not show up. And so, the, you know, I didn't know any of that stuff, but it was working and her business was growing and the stuff I was experimenting with was starting to work. Now, meanwhile, I was working at a, a job full time in the real estate sector and I started expressing interest to them to do some marketing. Like, Hey, I've got my wife, I'm helping her grow her business. I would really love to get into some marketing. And, uh, you know, they were like, okay, you know, just figure out how to work it into what you're doing now and, you know, do it for free. And I, I was doing, I was in real estate, but I was actually doing property management. And when I came in, they hired me to fix the property management 
department in the maintenance area. So I came in within about four months. I replaced two full-time employees. I had cut my working hours down from like 40 hours to 25 hours a week. I was a rock star. Like I was just a rock star. I came out of working at a church. If you've ever worked at a church, you know that you will work like a hundred hours a week and not get paid hardly anything for it. So I showed up at this real estate company ready to work and I was ready to work smart because I was tired of working, 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 never having a break. They paid me about $2,200 a month for the work that I was doing. And uh, I showed them that I could do more. I could handle more. In fact, it's funny, the CEO of the company, when I was asking them, I was asking them to give me marketing stuff to do. Like, I want to get out of property management. This sucks. Maintenance calls or whatever. Give me some marketing stuff to do. And um, he was like, this was actually right around the beginning of 2014. He was like, if you're not working 40 hours a week doing what you're doing, why do we need to have you on the team for 40 hours a week? And I was like, you don't. It was this real weird moment because I was basically telling the CEO of the company that he didn't need me anymore. And it was quiet and awkward. And he actually loved it. He knew at that moment that he was talking to more of an entrepreneur because you're either bold or you're stupid. And he knew I was stupid. So he knew that I was, I had an entrepreneurial bug to me. And so they gave me marketing. They, they started having me do their newsletters. They paid me $50 a week. It took me about three, four hours a week to do it. And at the time I was like, this is a load of money, a load of cash. I'm getting paid $200 extra a month to do this. Crazy, 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 crazy. You look at me now and probably you're probably like, what the hell? Like how that was, you're doing the math. That was four years ago. Thinking $200 a month was amazing. But anyways, I did it. I did a really good job. And they kept putting me on new projects. I kept growing. My wife's business kept growing, growing, growing. And I never got a raise from this real estate company. I asked several times, but they never gave me a raise. And about, I would say the um, end of summer, 2014, I decided to start taking my own clients outside of Memphis Invest. Memphis Invest was the real estate company that I worked at. If you guys are familiar with uh, Kate Clothier, it is his dad's company. I was working for King Clothier's dad. Um, so I was like, I'm going to start taking some clients outside of this real estate company. And the only way I knew how to do that was to post online on Facebook, letting my friends and family know that I was taking clients. And so I didn't know what I know now. You know, all the organic stuff that we teach you today literally came out of trial and error. And about that time, I paid a business coach $2,000 because like, I'm going to do this for real. I know I want to get out of this job. Paid a business coach $2,000. Literally, the guy, the guy took my money and sent me like hours and hours of video training on how to sell multi-level marketing products. I was like, dude, what in the world? This is not what I paid for. And I'm not going to sell. Like the only way that I could make money off of it was to go sell other people the program that I had just paid him $2,000 for. I was like, you're stupid. Ask for a refund. They didn't give me a refund. And then I paid a software company. I think it was $1,800 uh, because they were like, yeah, we can definitely help you. And they, ne- I didn't get any help there either. So I'm burning through an Amex credit card. I'm still in my day job because I have to. I'm making $200 a month on the side. I have to be at the day job. But I started viewing my day job as a way to fund my education on the side. And my wife, remember, was making more money than I was. We have built her business. So I was like, I'm going to stay at this job and I'm going to just use the money to, you know, keep paying for mentors. I was an animal, taking action, getting myself out there. And my first post was in a copywriting group. I posted in this copywriting group. I was like, hey guys, I will literally help you rewrite any piece of your copy for free. I I wanted, you know, I, I was going the same direction that I was doing with my wife's business, free haircut. Then if the haircut's good enough, they'll stick around. So like, you know, I'll write your copy for free. And then if I beat the original, you can pay me and stay on. So I posted this. I remember it was a Tuesday that I posted this. An hour later, I came back to check. I had over 60 comments on this post. Every single one of them was a hater. Every single one. Over 60 comments. And the comments were like, man, you should really hire a copywriter to write your pitch next time. I have no clue what you're even doing. So I'm going to say, why would, why would I hire you to write my copy when this is how you write your copy? It was brutal, brutal. Like literally I wanted to die. 
And I thought about deleting the post and I was really close. And um, I was like, now nah, I'm going to leave it up a little bit longer. I went home uh, for dinner. It was a Tuesday night. My wife could tell I was freaking pissed. And she thought I was mad at her. And I wasn't. And I was just like, I don't know if this is what I'm supposed to do. I just don't know. Because people hate me. <laughs> people literally want me to die. And apparently I'm not as good as I thought I was. Just looking at the evidence. Look at the facts. People were just being like, hey, your copy is shit. I thought I had something. And I was getting better. And look at all these people. And there were over 80 comments when I got home. And I ended up deleting the posts. Just couldn't handle it anymore. I was like, you know, this is bad to worse to horrible to like I'm getting low key depressed. So I ended up leaving the post and I remember though, the next morning I woke up to a message, a Facebook message from someone who said, Hey, I saw your post. I can't find it anymore, but I saw your post and I want to talk to you about, about doing this. So I was like, okay, I'll get on the phone with you. I didn't know how to sell. I never sold anything in my life. My first client was my wife who obviously didn't pay me. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, let's do it. I'll talk to you. And I talked to him and I explained what I would do for him and he didn't have to pay anything. And he actually said, no, you know what? Like, I want to pay you. Y'all, this was my first sale. My first sale was me telling him that I would do it for free. And he said, no, I want to pay. I'll, I'll pay you. How about 400 bucks? I said, I'll take it. Hell yeah, I will take it. 400 bucks. I wrote four sales pages for him, like four. So the copywriters in the group, you were scratching your head like, you did what? Like four sales pages for 400 bucks? It gets worse. I also did four funnels for him and I built a VSL for him. I built all the pages, all the tech, wrote all the copy. Anybody in this group who struggles with undercharging for their work, I know where you come from. I was you. I understand. All right, so here's the deal. Wrote him all this stuff and grinding. I still have my full-time job. I'm still helping my wife's business. Here was my schedule. I would wake up at five in the morning. I would go to Starbucks. I would work until about 7.30 when I would get to my day job. I would leave my day job at about 4.30, go to the gym. Then I would either go back to Starbucks or home and I would work until about eight o'clock at night. Grinding, 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 grinding. Now, there's a, long, there's a lot tied up in the story that I can tell you later because he ended up not even using the sales copy, which hurt. I'm just getting literally beat the shit over and over. There's a lot of resistance, but I ended up making a ride for him and I got another client after that and his copy did work. And then I got another client after that. And I looked up one day and I started to notice something. Six months ago, I was ecstatic that they were paying me $200 a month to do this newsletter. And I was ecstatic that I was able to do my job relatively easily. And I had time outside of work to take clients. But somewhere along those six months, I started becoming extremely unsatisfied. I started getting unhappy with what I was getting paid. I started to think I am freaking worth way more than $2,200 a month, way more than $2,200 a month. I'm making about $1,500 a month outside of work on like two or three hours a week because I had raised my prices. I'd gotten another client. I hadn't had anything on retainer yet, so I couldn't quit my job yet, but I just started becoming unhappy. And I didn't notice at the time, but what was happening to me is I was actually hacking into something that would take me from poverty to being a multimillionaire less than four years later. And the thing I was hacking into was my belief system around what do I deserve? What am I worth? If I'm going to put in the time and I'm going to put in the effort, what do I deserve to have in return? And the goals that I have, I started actually believing that I deserve to have them. And uh, it's amazing how most people will say they want something. But then when you get down to it internally, they just don't believe like they deserve it. And I'm thinking of several clients right now. One of them is an upper echelon and I love her so much and we're breaking her free of this, but she does something that's so life changing for her clients. And it's taken like six months to get her to believe that she deserves more than, you know, $3,000. <laughs> 
belief is such a big deal. It is such a big deal. And what I was hacking into was like, you know what? If you are working harder than everyone else around you, you start believing that you deserve what nobody else around you has. And that's why it's so important when you first get started that you're really putting in the time. You're really putting in the effort. But here's the thing. I can hear you all saying like, look, I would love that, but I do not want to wake up at five in the morning and work till nine o'clock at night. You're in this crew in this group right now, not so that we can make you work harder, right? So I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not telling you that you need to work harder, 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 harder. But what I am going to teach you today on today's call is how to hack your belief about yourself in the same way that I was doing with my work and my effort without having to work harder. So how do you cultivate this belief without working yourself into the ground. Three ways that you can cultivate a strong, unshakable, unbreakable belief that you deserve what you want to have. And part of the reason that this is so important that I didn't mention earlier is we can scientifically track now. This is crazy. But we can scientifically track the caliber of feelings that you are thinking. So pride they can put a machine on you and rate it, rate the energy. Apathy, they can rate it to a number. All of the, th the different emotions that you one person can feel, we can actually track it scientifically. And what's, a, what's really important is the people around you, it's actual energy. It's actually you know energy that's being pushed out of you and it will hit other people around you. This is where we, when we talk about projecting, projecting onto people, it is not a woo-woo thing. It's actually now very scientific that the things that you feel about yourself, you are going to project and hit other people with it. And they're going to start feeling the same way you feel about yourself. So if you don't feel like you deserve $5,000 for what you're doing, or if you don't feel like you deserve $12,000 or whatever the number is, you are going to actually emanate energy that is going to hit someone else. And they are going to mirror that and they will feel the same way. So it's not woo-woo. It's the real deal. It's the real deal. So belief is important. It's one of the most important elements that you can cultivate. So three ways that you can cultivate belief that you deserve. Belief that you deserve what you want to have. All right, number one, here's the first way for you to cultivate belief in yourself that you deserve what you want to have. Number one, you will write this down. Keep the promises you make with yourself. Keep the promises you make with yourself. Number one is so simple, but most people don't get it. They will go through hell and back to keep a promise made to someone else, but they will easily and effortlessly break a promise that they've made to themselves. The promises you make with yourself are the most important promises to keep. When I was working 24 seven, grinding away at this real estate company, I told myself I was going to build something great. I told myself that, I was not going to stay at a level so far beneath my potential. I told myself I was going to get out of there. And my behavior matched the promise that I made to myself. And therefore, I started to believe that I actually deserved what I wanted. You look at a, let's say you look at NBA or NFL players. We've got the NBA playoffs happening right now. Hip hip hooray to LeBron, who uh, took the Cavs over the finish line yesterday. Do you think that there's any part of LeBron, LeBron James, arguably one of the, the best, if not the best basketball player alive today, do you think that, that there's any part of LeBron that says, you know what, I, I just don't know if I deserve to win a championship? Do you think there's any part of his mental state that is not ruthlessly 100% believing that he deserves to win the championship? He works smarter. He works harder. He says he's going to go to the gym at 5 a.m. He freaking is going to the gym at 5 a.m. He says he's going to do X, Y, Z. He is going to do X, Y, Z. You are a professional business man or woman. You are the, Le Le the LeBron James of your market. There cannot be room anywhere in your psyche that believes you don't deserve to be the best. LeBron believes he's the best because he's paid for it. His behavior has been in alignment with the promises he's made to himself. 
So listen, you write this down too. Behavior and belief are linked together. Behavior and belief are linked together. It's impossible for you to believe that you deserve what you want to have when you can't line up your behavior and keep the promises you make with yourself. You want to fix your belief? Sometimes the fastest way to do it is to fix your behavior. You fix your belief by fixing your behavior. You keep the promises you make with yourself. If you say you're going to go to the gym, you better go to the gym. At the time, you say you're going to go. You say you're going to be with your kids, hang up the phone and be with your kids. If you say you're going to do X, Y, Z, you do X, Y, Z. You keep the promises that you make with yourself. That's number one. Number two, rehearse the right stories. Rehearse the right stories. I remember when I made that post in that Facebook group and uh, for like a week and a half, literally all I could think about was how stupid I was to think that I could make a post in a Facebook group and get a client. Just thought about it all the time. This is what happens. You are going to experience the same story in reality that you rehearse mentally. Say it again. You are going to experience the same story in reality that you rehearse mentally. This is why we send every new client a copy of Psycho Cybernetics because Dr. Maxwell Maltz figured, sorry, figured out a long time ago that visualization, the brain cannot tell the difference between what happens in our heads and what happens out there in the world. So you've got, this is the same thing, pro athletes, being an athlete is so congruent with being a business owner and entrepreneur because it's all performance based, it's all mental and it's, it's clutch, it's performance, knowing how to perform and make the right decisions in the heat of the moment. But athletes will actually rehearse the outcome that they want before they go into the game. They'll rehearse the outcome that they want before they go into the game. And if you study Maxwell Maltz, which every one of you should be studying that book, you should read it more than once. He talks about having that uh, inner theater of the mind where you go and you rehearse and you rehearse and you rehearse and you rehearse and you visualize and you rehearse and you rehearse. And And here's the thing. If you're going to cultivate a strong belief, you have to rehearse the right stories. You cannot focus only on the things that go wrong. Here's Here's what people do. They just think about the stuff that goes wrong. They don't write down wins. They don't... They don't do uh, weekly reviews or monthly reviews so they can re- you know, rehearse what works. They only remember what they don't like. There are two main stories you can tell yourself. One is you can tell yourself, oh, this is so hard. I'm struggling and things aren't working out like I hope they would. And I invested money into this program and I haven't gotten a client. And this person over there got a client and Jane got a client and Shaniqua got a client and I didn't get a client. It's so hard. And I'm just having to wake up and just do the do the process and I just need someone to console me and to pet my hair and to tell me it's going to be okay. That's the first story. The second story you can tell yourself is, look, I'm right in the middle of my breakthrough, right in the middle. You know, I may not be a hundred percent there. I may not be a hundred percent where I want to be, but you know what? How many people stop halfway through their breakthrough and they never get to the other side? How many people do you know? that almost made it, but they stopped at 75%. They stopped at 85% or the worst. They stopped at like 98%. They never got it through to the other side because they weren't rehearsing success. They weren't rehearsing the right stories. They were rehearsing failure. You got to learn how to tell yourself a better story. You got to learn how to rehearse a better outcome. You got to catch yourself when you start sliding into negative loops. You got to tell listen, this is the story to rehearse. I'm in the middle of my breakthrough. If I keep the process, the process will serve me. The process will serve me. Think about who you were seven years ago or four years ago or friggin' hell, a year and a half ago. Are you better now than you were then? Yes or no? Okay, so most of the people are going to say yes. Why aren't you rehearsing that story? Sometimes if I'm being honest with you, I will catch myself getting down and depressed because I want to be at the top of the next mountain. I want to be making a million dollars a month. I want to be doing this. I want to be doing that. I want to be doing that. 
and I'll go three months without looking back and saying, dude, four years ago, I was a poor person in more ways than one. And look how far I've come. You got to rehearse the right story. Number one, you got to keep the promises you make with yourself. Number two, you got to rehearse the right stories. Number three, number three, number three, number three, numero trace. You've got to protect your environment with fury and fire. Ruthless protection of your environment. Like I was telling you at the beginning of this call, the reason we started Mindset Mondays is because mindset is like the body. How stupid would it be for someone to sit on the couch, obese, complaining to God and the devil and everyone who will listen about how they are overweight and don't look like they want to look like while eating a bag of Doritos, sitting on the couch watching TV. How silly is that? How silly? But yeah, we do the same thing in life, don't we? The same thing in business, right? Man, I want to make a million dollars a month. But you know what? I'm dipping out of CK. I'm going to go hang out with all my buddies who make five grand a month. You can't outgrow your environment, man. You will never outgrow your environment. Your environment is a cap and a throttle on your potential. The fastest way, you want to know the fastest way for you to get in shape is you go find all the people who you can spend time with who look better than you want to look. And pretty soon you spend all your time around those people and you're going to start looking better. The fastest way for you to become wealthy, if you want to make a million dollars, you go find the people who, if they only made a million dollars, they'd be pissed off. They make so much more than a million dollars that they'd be embarrassed if someone knew they only made a million dollars. And what happens is little by little, they start rubbing off on you. And what's, what used to be acceptable is no longer acceptable. And what you used to tolerate, you're no longer willing to tolerate. And I to guarantee you, you will start making a million dollars because it's unacceptable not to. This is actually the reason, you know, you heard my story. We started in Memphis, now we're in Nashville. Why are we in Nashville? Everyone that I knew in Memphis was negative. Poverty-minded, scarcity-minded. I grew up around people that didn't have any financial intelligence and it's not, I'm not mad at them. They just didn't know any better and they weren't players. They weren't positive people. They weren't opportunity minded. And I woke up and I knew that I had maxed out. My environment wasn't going to take me any further. And my, in fact, this is where it gets scary. My environment was actually working against the person that I wanted to become. So I'd wake up and I would do my morning formula and then like, I'd go to lunch with a buddy and, and it would like literally work against me. There was nobody that I knew who had already done the crap that I wanted to do. Nobody. I couldn't find them. And so one day I was like, you know, we need to talk about it leaving. Your environment is huge. And not just the people, but environment is also things. I was talking with an amazing upper echelon client. His name was Bradley a couple of days ago. We talked about this. I was talking to uh, many of you know my brother Peyton, who is uh, our main sales and enrollment guys. And um, this is what happens: is like this is why I bought my Tesla. I was driving an Accord. Nothing wrong with a Honda Accord. It was amazing. It was my first car that I bought. But I was going to the office every day, and I was saying, "Hey, pay me seventy five hundred dollars. We'll help you." Like it's no big deal. And my whole life was built around this identity that I felt sort of like an imposter. Like when I went outside and got into my car. It didn't match up with the person on my morning formula. And I had to upgrade my environment. And I was telling Peyton, like I was telling Bradley, the same thing. Like, you know, you came in making like a thousand bucks a month or 500 bucks a month or something stupid. And then all of a sudden you've got 20K in your bank account and you're still spending the same amount of money. And uh, you haven't normalized anything, bro. Nothing's normalized for you. Now, I'm not saying you need to take all the money out of your bank account and just go be an idiot and spend everything. That'd be pretty dumb advice. But there are times when if you're going to reach up to that next level and you're going to grab it, then you're going to have to normalize the current season you're in. So people, that's one way you can protect your environment, get into an environment where everyone's above you, everyone's beyond you, and everyone is keeping you moving and growing. But another way is to protect your environment with the things that you have. My office is decked out. When I get to my office, I've got a beautiful view 
over the hills of Franklin, which is about 20 minutes south of Nashville. I've got furniture in here. Chris has got furniture in his office. It reminds me of the person that I want to be. When I hop into my Tesla, it reminds me of the person that I've built my identity around. Today, just got a brand new Acura NSX. I'm kind of over, oh, I just want to have things, stuff, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. But I am constantly and ruthlessly upgrading my environment, reaching for new things, trying to keep the people that I speak to and that I spend time around beyond me so I can keep pushing. Sometimes you got to uplevel your environment to be in alignment with the, denti- with the identity that you want to have. Sometimes you got to uplevel your environment to be in alignment with the identity you want to have. Environment. Number one, keep the promises you make with yourself. Those are the most important. Number two, rehearse the right stories. Number three, protect your environment with fury and fire. And here's the deal. There are so many other things that we could talk about when it comes down to mindset. But we're going to do this every week, so we got time. We got plenty of time to do some cooking in the kitchen, if you know what I mean. But step number one is you got to believe that you deserve what you want to have. Whatever it is on your morning formula, a big house on the beach or on the lake, or maybe the new car, maybe it's to get out of debt, or maybe it's to help X amount of people get what they want. You've got to be able to actually internalize this belief that you deserve to have what you want to have. If you don't have that, everything is going to work against you all the time, including your own and your own mental stamina. You're going to be like a like a ship blown both ways on the sea. Your conscious brain fires with I don't know. It's like <clears throat> what is it like ten thousand neurons a second. Your subconscious brain fires with like two hundred thousand neurons a second. I don't remember the math on that, but your subconscious brain is really the main sail that is attached to the ship of reality. And if you can't convince that subconscious brain that you deserve to have what you want, then mentally, cognitively, you're going to be pushing for something. And subconsciously, your subconscious brain is going to say, nope, we don't deserve to go there. And it's going to pull you the opposite direction. And many of you are stuck here and you're having a difficult time making sales. and You have a difficult time even doing simple things like posting on Facebook. And this is why. At the end of the day, you want something consciously, subconsciously, you don't feel like you deserve it. These three things can get you out of a good bind. Rehearse the right stories to yourself. Keep the promises you make with yourself and ruthlessly protect your environment. So that's all I got for you today. All right, guys. See you. What's up, everybody? Chris here. And just want to take a minute and say thank you so much for listening to the Smartest Guys in Marketing podcast. We really appreciate you hanging out with us. Please go leave a review on iTunes, whether it's positive or negative. We want to hear your feedback and know what you're thinking and how we can improve. And if you know anybody that needs to hear what we're saying, please share with them. And the last thing I have to tell you today is if you haven't gotten the monthly memos, jump over there and grab it at trafficandfunnels.com slash memos. Here's the deal. The monthly memos is an opportunity for us to download what's happening in our business with our clients. And that's from mindset to marketing, to strategy, to tactics, to traffic, to funnels, business operations. Across the board, we are able to just break down and give to you what's happening. So our journey is to make a big impact. We want to make a massive impact on people's lives. And for us to do that, we're doing things like the monthly memos. We want you to get ahead faster and make a lot less mistakes that, than what we have made. And I think it's a great medium for you to do that. So jump over there, grab that. The price is ridiculously low. And we, we did that for a reason, just so there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to jump on there. Travelingfunnels.com slash memos. And uh, listen, again, really, really appreciate you guys.